So how do we change things? How do we get rid of ignorance and apathy? One person at a time. But we must speak out. We must raise our voices. We must speak truth to power. And then, of course, there's Alex Jones. He abolishes ignorance and apathy on a grand scale, maybe thousands at a time. But you know what? He can't do it alone. We have to do our part, even if it's just one person a day. We've got to do it, and we will. Now, I've got my own way of reaching people. I'm running for Congress. And, and already, several of my articles have been reprinted in the Congressional Record. I've drafted legislation, lined up sponsors, and gotten bills passed. Just think what I can do when I actually get there. <laughs> I want to take the 9-11 truth movement mainstream in a big way. As I said this morning, it's time for the 9-11 truth movement to move out of rented hotels and into the halls of Congress. I've already lined up co-sponsors for legislation initiating a truly independent investigation of 9-11 and for articles of impeachment against Bush, Cheney, Rumsfeld, yeah. and Biden. Yeah. Now they say it doesn't take a rocket scientist to run our government. Nevertheless, I am one. <laughs> I'm also a career military officer, a former executive in government and industry. I've been a stuffy college professor, a song and dance man, a radio talk show host, three different states, three different times, an itinerant preacher, and of course, a husband to the same wonderful woman for 50 years. Wow. As Alex told you, we celebrated our golden anniversary Friday night. And we had our seven children and 21 grandchildren and guests from all over the country there in Melbourne, Florida, celebrating uh, Mass at the Patrick Air Force Base Chapel and then a dinner dance at the Indian River Colony Club, which is a military retirement community. Now, needless to say, getting here wasn't easy. <laughs> well, I've been a lot of things in my life, but one thing I have never been is a politician. And I'm not about to start now. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of us, ordinary citizens, mostly combat veterans, mostly Democrats. We're running for Congress for the first time. We want to kick the professional politicians out of Washington and have a government which serves the people for a yeah. Now, I'm not going to stand up here for another half an hour and try to convince you that 9-11 was done this way or done that way or try to show you more evidence that uh, things didn't happen the way we are told. You know, what can I add to the kind of stuff you've heard from Dr. Stephen Jones from Alex Jones and from all the others in this marvelous conference. 
So what I would like to do for you is put 9-11 in perspective. Because it is part of such a big picture. Most Americans don't understand what's been done to them. Now we have a great country. The United States is number one in the industrialized world. Number one in our use of the world's resources. Number one in the production of pollution. Number one in the gap between the rich and the poor. Number one in deaths by gunfire. Number one in teen pregnancy. Number one in poverty among the elderly. Number one in citizens without health coverage. Number one in child poverty. Number one in homeless veterans. And number one, by far, in citizens behind bars. We've got a larger percentage of our black population in jail than South Africa did at the height of apartheid. We're the world's number one dare nation, number one in the creation of new billionaires, number one in school dropouts, number one in poverty, homelessness, hunger, divorce, suicide, and oh yes, number one in military force, nuclear weapons, and military spending as much as all the other nations on earth combined. This also makes us the number one object of fear and hatred in the world, and therefore, along with our friends in Israel, the number one target of terrorists. We are not the target of terrorists because they envy us, or they don't like our democracy, or our freedoms, or our human rights. Clinton, when I was so ticked off at him when he said that they hate us because of our democracy, our freedom, and our human rights. They hate us because we deny freedom, democracy, and human rights to people in the third world. We also lead the world in the number of hours worked per family. Because real hourly wages in this country are now a third, in real terms, a third of what they were in the 1950s. Now a lot of people may be shocked by that. They say, but our economy is great and we've got low unemployment and they're creating all these new jobs. Of course, one of my sons has three of them. <laughs> you can't support a family with one job anymore like we did in the 50s. It takes two wage earners and three jobs. Is that because we're so much less productive than we were then? Baloney! Productivity has doubled over and over and over again. Our workers are the most productive in the world, yet they take home the smallest percentage of the wealth they create. If worker pay in this country had kept up with executive pay, the average worker would now be making over a million dollars a year, and the minimum wage would be $171 an hour. <laughs> <laughs>